Hi, I'm XTV producer Jennifer Moore, and in this episode of XTV Newsers, we have someone with a different sort of background, the creative promotion side. All right, so I am here with Kevin Colby, and we met in an interesting way. So both of us are in this online class for YouTubers, which has been a really cool experience for me. And we're in this private Facebook group, and you get to talk to all sorts of other people that are really interested in YouTube. So that's how Kevin and I met, and I will link the class below because it's awesome. It's called Video Ranking Academy. Kevin, thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm, I, I, I've am i looked for, forward to this all day. Oh my gosh, me too. Oh, yeah. Me too. Well, um, so for people kind of unfamiliar, how um, can you kind of describe like what you did at TV stations? Because people don't know, like, there are so many employees that work at these stations besides like the, the anchors and reporters. My, for the majority of the years I was in television, I was in the promotion and marketing department. Uh, for the last 14 years, uh, I was the creative director at a Fox affiliate in Raleigh. And basically, a way to look at it is we were the internal advertising agency for the television station. Now, our department also did commercials and programs and things like that. But for the most part, over my entire career, our focus was working with the news department and figuring out how to promote them and the stories they were doing and things like that. So think of it as, you know, we worked for the station, we were employees, but we were also in charge of, of what was, uh, you know, creating a voice for the station and helping uh, promote the station and the programming and the news and things like that. Not only just on our own uh, TV station, but also we would do the outside creative that would run on radio or cable or something like that. And I got to say, I used to hang out like with the guys at my promotions department at TV stations. They seem to have such a cool job. What kind of content would you create for stations? Well, and, and you know, we would always get accused of, you know, uh, we just sat around and watched TV all day, which we kind of did. <laughs> because we were, it you was know, for a purpose, though, right? Party. Yeah. You know, the, some of the content, it, and, and the, here's, the, here's why I love we're doing this, because if I look back to the content we were creating 10, 12, 15, 20 years ago, I've, I've been in it quite a while. It was very centric focused to just on air. You know, it was like a 30 second promo and, and they would have formats and that's all we'd do. We'll jump ahead to the last few years and we were creating just as much content for web and social as opposed to television before we even got into creating like radio commercials and cable spots and then digital ads that would run in the mall and places like that. So it completely changed um, the landscape of how we promoted because you want to go to where the people are because they're not just watching television. Now I have to ask, did you ever do those promos with the news anchors with their arms crossed and they're like standing on a roof and then a helicopter flies over or something like that? You know, that? I would like to say no, but yeah, you know, the, the old turn. It's like, you know, Trisha yeah. Tanaka, or whatever, wasn't that the character <laughs> from South Park or something? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. late breaking, local, yeah. you know. So, so Kevin is the one that produced those types of a long time ago commercials. <laughs> and what, um, like, so when you were doing more social media content, what kind of stuff were you doing there? That's that's interesting. Well, you know, we we tried to sometimes we'd work with the anchors to see what they were into and what they were what they liked. Um, you know, bloopers were good and getting them off camera, you know, getting them to use their smartphones as well. And just trying to kind of break them out of the box behind behind the, of the scene. A, a lot of the the image we call them image spots. So if somebody's watching this, what does that, what does that mean? It's like, you know, you might have a, a new anchor or an anchor, a uh, weather guy, and, and you want to just, you know, the viewers get to know them a little bit more rather than they just sit behind a desk and do this. And so a lot of things I would do is I would take them out places and just start talking to them. And then we would, we would cut those into promos so you would get to know a little bit more about them. Well, the funny thing is that translates very well to social because they can be themselves. Um, you know, a lot of times we would do text only uh, type of, of uh, commercials because that's what would get your attention. Sometimes it would just be a clip. Um, but a lot of times I think this, I think the way social can help and has helped some with, with uh, news anchors is that it allows them to be a little bit more of a person. 
mm -hmm. rather than just a news reader, which you've heard that phrase. Yeah. Now I was talking to some other on-air folks and they were <clears throat> kind of expressing the, uh, this, and I think a lot of uh, online influencers are facing this too. Uh, they were always constantly worried about saying something that came off wrong or off con, you know, out of context right. or off color. And I thought that was an interesting, because again, I was a producer, I was off right. air, so I never really had to worry about right. like damaging my public image like that. But right. I think it's, it was interesting to see how many of them are really scared about, you know, getting fired or having something happen like that, like kind of like the Logan yeah. Paul situation, although on a much lower scale, obviously, uh, you know, uh, the people in right. the newsroom have all received yeah. training not to do that type of thing. Right. Um, well, but I think that's an interesting part of uh, being an on-air personality too. And, yeah, and from a marketing standpoint, I mean, you know, uh, the, the, there's a good and a bad to it, right? So what a lot of the folks watching television don't know is that in, in most, probably every market, uh, you know, you, you always are constantly testing your talent. You know, how are viewers receiving them? How are they liking them? Consultants will come in. Now, sometimes they can be consulted to death, you yeah. know, but I mean, it'll go down to the color of tie and their hair, either one which affected me, but, you know, and, and sit this way and, 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 it, and it really gets then into body language and things like that. So, so they've got that going on the whole time. But then there's other times where when, from a marketing standpoint, we always wanted to present um, our talent in the best light, and I'm not talking about like key light, but in the best light possible, because ultimately, even radio or television, they become the face of the station or the network or the cable yeah. channel or the program. And now granted, if they go off and do something crazy on their own, <laughs> then we shift to damage control. Yeah. But for the most time, they, they get it. And, and, and it takes a while, I think, for them to realize that, you know, we're working together on this. You know, we have no desire to make you look stupid. We're actually going to help you, you know. And, and there were several over my career that, that we bonded well enough that they would come up and say, well, what do you think? And I'd say, yeah, I, you know, I don't know if I'd say that, maybe say this or let's not do that or why don't you twist that? And, and, and I think that's when you have that trust that they get that, you know, we're, we want to help them. So over the years, you, you've kind of worked alongside the newsroom. Do you have yes. any observations about like the newsroom culture or kind of the way newsrooms run that maybe people would find interesting? Like, like, you know, it's just from a thing, like a, an onlooker. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, I don't, I don't know if you ever saw the movie broadcast news. Here's oh yes. Oh yes. Sadly, a lot of that is true. <laughs> You know, the, what, what the funny thing is, you know, if you ever get a chance to visit the set, it, it, television always is going to make it look bigger. You see the non-glamorous side of it. But what, what people really don't get, and, and I saw this in every, every newsroom I worked with, is sometimes it's right up to air when we're going on that everything comes together. I remember, uh, I'll give you a great example, uh, Brett Baer, who's now with Fox mm -hmm. News. Uh, I worked with Brett here in Raleigh, and the, his first day on the job, they like, Brett, you, you got it. There's, there's a major storm out in, in, in Bun, and you got to get out there. And so they send him out the door. He hasn't, he doesn't know where the coffee machine is. Yeah, and, and he's, he's going out to do something. He's going out to do something. And like seconds before he goes live, you, you see him off camera going, now where are we? What's the name of this place? Yeah. And that's the thing, because yeah. a lot of these people in the business uh, move to different cities. Yes. Yeah. So you may move to El Paso from Atlanta, and you don't know any of the, the street names or any of the places or any of the people. Yeah. So it's something that's like, it's kind of like shock culture for yeah. people to move around. And like, I lived in El Paso, and again, I'd never, I'm, you know, you take a job and you've never been there before. Right. And I had never, I'd never traveled. I took the job over the phone. You know, it was my first job. And I didn't know anything about, I did not speak Spanish very well, you know, so those, and that's the thing. I think viewers at home can be pretty critical of honor personalities. Yeah. Like they mispronounce a street name or somebody's name, but I think anyone would do that if they were in that situation. Like it's very, yeah. It, yeah. and I think that's something that, you know, anchors and reporters get a lot of flack on that maybe a little, a little bit unfair sometimes, you know, again, it's, yeah. it is up to them to learn those yeah. things, but especially when they're new on the job. It's, it's something that's going to be a little bit painful. 
Well, you know, and I think that's the good and the bad of it. I mean, the, 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 the thing is, is that they, they are paid at whatever level, whatever market size to really just talk to a person. I mean, a lot of times they're reading, but, but they still have to make that connection. But then they're also in the public eye. So people will get yeah. to know them and then they feel like they can critique, you know, what they're wearing and things like that. So there is a little bit of a thick skin that I think on air people have to have. And, and you know, you extend that to what we do. I mean, especially now, I mean, you post a video and if somebody hates it, they may not hold back and telling you. And, and now it's probably a little bit more hidden behind, you know, a, a fake username sometimes. Yeah. But you, you know, you have to, if you, when you put yourself in front of a camera in a public setting, I don't care if it's YouTube, LinkedIn, on air, whatever, you have to be willing to take the good and the bad and hopefully the bad doesn't go too crazy. And hopefully sometimes you can turn the haters into at least a little bit more human and loving, even though they may not like it. Exactly. Now I want to back up a little bit. Now, how, um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into the business in the first place? Yeah. So when I was a kid, a, a, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I thought I wanted to be in radio. And I had a little bitty turntable and a stack of 45s, which probably some people are like, what? And they're like little mini records. And I would play DJ in my bedroom. Oh my God. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. And I would take the little and I'd say, Hey, coming up next, you know? And, and so that's what I, I thought I wanted to do. Flash forward. When I started college, I had a chance to get into radio. It was a small little bitty uh, station that, that it was called a daytimer, meaning that we were low power at night and, full power during the day. So anyway, I was in radio for several years and then had an opportunity to get into television. Brand new television group had come to Nashville. This is where I was from, Nashville, Tennessee at the time. They were hiring people with no experience who would work for cheap and I fit both those bills. And they hired me ironically to be the promotion manager. But it was kind of one of those things they said, do you want to be on television? Sure. Do you want to learn how to edit? Yes. Do you want to write? Yes. And I said, I'm just hungry. I, I, want, to, I want to learn all this. And that all of a sudden just kind of lit this fire of passion when it got to video and create. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I just moved to other stations within Nashville until we moved to Raleigh a few years ago. And you got out of the business, was it last year? Last yes, year? yeah, it was, it was actually March. Uh, what happened is they, and this happens a lot in our business, they oh, limit yes. our position. Uh, uh, locally owned company, fantastic company, great ownership, but you have a dominant station and another station and they needed to just make some financial decisions. I'd been there 24 years, they took care of me. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, <coughs> sorry. But they, uh, but yeah, they eliminated the position and and quite honestly, it's been a huge blessing because it's allowed me to do some things I don't think I would have done and try some other things. But yeah, I was, I was there for 24 years. Well, and what, um, if you don't mind me asking, like as far as changes in the business, so um, if you were like, if you were starting out your career now right. instead of when you did, like what, what do you think would be different? Like it, we're in just yeah. such a different time. You know, it is. I, I think I would, you know, for, for, for the last 14 years, I was creative director and I was crazy blessed with an amazing creative team that we actually grew at one point to about 12, which is big for a local yeah. television. Oh yeah. That's, that's actually very, I think the ones I worked at, it was maybe five, maybe yeah. five at the most. Yeah. So I think, you know, what happened is I surrounded myself with incredibly talented people. So I probably took slacked off of learning things for a while. So one, I, I would probably dive into more of what I don't know and what do I need to know mm -hmm. about it. Uh, yeah. The other thing too is I, you know, being a, a marketer, it's funny because when all of a sudden I had to market me, you know, I, I think I would have probably sooner taken chances on YouTube and some things like that when before it kind of looked like a gamer platform, you know. I feel exact. Yeah, I feel the same way. I'm like, why didn't I do this? Yeah. With our backgrounds working in TV, it would have been a really natural yeah. progression. Um, do you wish you'd taken more like risks like that? Like I do. I mean, I, I think what happened is I was, I was really vested in the station and what we were doing. So the funny thing is some new platform would pop up. Well, I would go check it out and then I might grab uh, an account and a domain name to lock it in for the station. 
but it was never dawn on me. Oh, yeah. What about me? What about Kevin? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so it wasn't until a few years ago that I finally decided, you know, maybe I need to start a website with my name. And ironically, I had to buy my name from somebody from, else had it. Yeah, some dude out there. And, and oh, he wanted man. to haggle. And I said, I, I'm not worth that much. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. So I think that's one of the things that if, if, if people get that, that they're just even thinking about starting, it sounds silly, but yeah. acquire things like your name on, on all the social platforms and you can make them private and, 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 and just, just park them there, but then play. Yeah, and exactly. Experiment out. and try it out. And I think it's hard. A lot of people are talking about YouTube, but they haven't used YouTube. Yeah. yeah. And I've noticed that a lot with, with yeah. my TV friends, they watch YouTube videos but not a lot of them have made YouTube videos yeah. or like really spent a lot of time in the, in the community. Yeah. And I think that's a, I, I think that's something I would do now coming on the other side. Yeah. Because it's such a different, it's yeah. such a different world that I think reporting on YouTube without understanding YouTube, you know, you're not going to get as much perspective. Exactly. It's, it's like trying to explain to somebody, you know, how Instagram works. And I was just joking with, with a buddy of mine about this. And, and, but yet they go, do you have Instagram? And you go, Oh no, I'm I not. don't know. Well, I'm an expert on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's things I don't know. I don't understand how to do taxes or change the oil in my truck. I let somebody else do that. Yeah. And now it seems like every <coughs> single, everyone is touting themselves as a social media expert, <clears throat> but yeah, you look at their social media accounts and they have like 15 followers. It's yeah. like, how are you yeah. an expert on social media yeah. or YouTube? If you don't, if you're not successful on the, and that's what I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I, I was very, I tried to be very strategic and, and, and post my, my TV job of, of kind of how I called myself. And I, I refer to myself as a creative media specialist. And the reason I use specialists is because what you just said, if I say yeah, expert, expert. Goes, you should know everything about everything. And I'm like, nobody does. No. And, and I would rather just say, I don't know anything about that. Let's figure it out. It's like, you'd rather market yourself on, you know, with low, with not such a lofty expectations. Yeah. Like yeah. I know every, every yeah. single thing. Yeah. yeah. But I love the creative side and all of the media side. It just drives me. I, I consume media. I love to create it. I, you know, and going back to your question about what would I do? I think I would be creating more sooner than I did. More like on your own outside yeah, of, for, outside yeah, of for my own. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, I was thinking about this. I was like, you know what? I wish I would have started a YouTube channel in like 2006, 2007. But at the time I had these really ironclad TV contracts that basically didn't allow me to like one contract even had something like if your spouse creates a business, we can claim ownership. Like it was some crazy Are stuff. You serious? Yeah, I'm not. And it would be at all, it had all this language, like in perpetuity of the universe, whether that's, <laughs> whether that's enforceable, I don't know. Yeah. But if I had started, like if I'd started a channel in 2008 and it blew up, I like, I could have gotten, I honestly yeah. probably could have gotten sued by my station. Like if they saw money and they saw I was doing that, you know, on the outside. Yeah. So I think that's one thing that, the YouTube community, like they're probably like, why don't these TV people get on YouTube? Yeah. And some of them are very restricted by what they can do. Yeah. Like, and, I, and that's the thing, like it was like for a producing contract, which is kind of, and the, I feel like some of the business is getting away from contracts, yeah. like especially for the off-air people. I don't think contracts are necessary for producers in like yeah. a tape editor um, or an assignment editor, but I mean for talent, yes. But for someone that's, that's off air, I just don't, I don't understand why they're restricting, locking these people down. My contract was three years and seven months. That was an insanely long amount of time for, yeah. it was crazy. Well, and then a lot of these contracts too, I mean, I never had a contract and never actually wanted one, but a lot of these contracts too then have non-competes. Yeah. So you can't so, get a job in the same city Yeah, it's, unless it's, you can wait it out the six months. Yeah. Now I do know of stations uh, that, you know, they, they want to take their on air, on air folks. And if they have like a Twitter account or Facebook, yeah. they want them to align it with the station and things like that. You know, I, I can go both sides on that. I, I understand yeah. from a branding standpoint, but I also think that you kind of muffle that person maybe. Yeah. And I think it's, if the person had the account before they <coughs> came to the station, I don't, I, I think you're going to see more of these. Like if the person yeah. <clears throat> owns a popular social media account, then who owns it when they leave? Right. I think we're going to see more and more of those types of disputes maybe. Um, 
Yeah. And I think it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what kind of precedent is set because I, and, and that's the thing, like a lot of these people are like, I spend so much time on my, my public Facebook page or my Twitter account. And if they leave, they don't want, you know, they don't want to leave it behind or they don't yeah. want to have to close it down because they've spent so yeah. much, they've invested so much time and effort into maintaining them. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, I, I think it's just, I mean, local news, <coughs> sorry, I'm getting over it. It's okay. Local news is hurting. Local television is hurting. And, and some of it is just the way society has, has gone again. You know, I can get something here quickly, <laughs> but a lot of it is not adapting. And a lot of it is, is like holding information and, and, you know, I'm going to tease something that's going to come up four hours from now. And it's like, yeah, but I just want to know now. Yeah. I can is Google it, it on my phone tomorrow? now. Yeah, I don't I'll have to wait. you in four hours. Well, yeah. really? No, I just tell me now. And that was a complaint we would get all the time. <laughs> It'd be like, well, why do I have to wait to 10 o'clock? Yeah. You tell me that. Nope. No chance of rain. Well, okay. And, and I, you know, I, I personally think, that local stations could learn a lot from YouTube. And oh my gosh. I feel, yes. Yes. But I, there's this, I think sometimes there's a mindset of, but if we do that, it won't work. And it's like, yeah, but if you don't ever try and, and change some, it's not going to work because I mean, like probably most markets, you know, you're out in, where are you? I'm in Atlanta right now. Okay, so how many how many news stations are there? Oh, uh, there's like what, like four, I think. Okay, I think there's right. WSB, WXIA, Awaga, and WGCL. So like four yeah. main yeah. ones. And here you've got uh, WRAL, TVD, and and uh, NCN, uh, NBC, ABC, CBS, and and even Fox, who has a morning and an, and an evening. That's a lot of news. Yeah. And even if there's one thing going on, there's only so much of it you can consume and things like that. But then what if I want something other than news? And I just feel like there's still a very linear way that they tell stories that people want something different. I don't know. I just, I, I you know, I, the, the two things that <coughs> Casey, Casey Neistat's uh, beam news is phenomenal. And I watched one of the stories on um, Civil War history, and I got to tell you, may say something more about me. I learned more about Civil War history from that than I have on any news program. Um, Phil DeFranco, you know, oh, now yes. some of you guys I could do without the language and things like that, yeah. but I'm, but I'm telling you, if if you look at the way it's even cut and edited, you don't see that on traditional newscasts, no. but yet. It's content and it's a way of doing it. And, and I, I think they could learn a lot. Yeah. What, you know, I've heard the criticism from news friends on Philip DeFranco. Oh, he's just, he's just, you know, he's just taking what other people done and have done and saying that. But here's the thing. He's been able to do what a lot of stations have and that's gain a huge audience. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you got to have respect to him for that. And I think, I think there are probably things that their show could do better, but at the same time, they've got the thing that matters is the attention. Right. And well, and the other thing too, is they're on platforms that are interactive Yeah, and, and can cause engagement. You know, television is still passive. I mean, it's like you sit, I listen and we move on unless I'm going online and I'm talking about it. You exactly. know, I mean, for how long did news stations, you know, when they had their websites, they literally just took this, the story and they still do this and just put it on the website and said, there, we're on the web. Yeah, the even thing. now. And they, and I think one, they don't, usually create a lot of good content that's web only like sometimes like they'll put whole interviews up or create stuff but I don't think they're really innovating with yeah. creating content really yeah. specifically for different platforms like I and think you know, I think the other thing too that has has led to that to a degree is that you know for a long time television was rich with revenue you know, I mean, even outside of the Super Bowl and stuff like that. And it's still, a, it's still a very good platform. I'm not down on television. No. I just want to see it change them. But digital has never been able to make that amount of money. So when you've got companies that have this much of a bottom line, they want the same revenue over here. And, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not an apples to apples thing. No, not at all. Well, I, I do want to ask, so as far as 
like what kind of things have you learned about YouTube since you really started getting into it? Like things that you think would be helpful to someone that, that maybe is unfamiliar with YouTube or like comes from a news background interested, but hasn't really done it. Like what kind of challenges have you faced that you didn't expect? Well, you know, first of all, I, I don't think I was aware of how much of a search engine it was. You know, I, I would use YouTube to go look at something and, or watch trailers or something like that. And then I think in, in me getting more into it from my perspective about me, <coughs> it was like, wow, how easy it was to search. And then, you know, through some of the other courses that you and I even met on, you know, of, of really how much it is searched. So that was one. But then even how accessible it is, mm -hmm. you know, like if you want a channel, you can start a channel. Now, just because you start one doesn't mean everybody sees it and they can come there. I mean, I've been playing more with uh, Facebook and LinkedIn re recently and have seen amazing things uploading natively to LinkedIn, uh, which is, you know, something that businesses ought to really think about, you know. Now, I don't know if television stations need to start marketing the, to LinkedIn because that's what we do. You know, we jump on it and we ruin it for everybody. But the other thing is, too, is that, that there's a community, there's communities on YouTube that I never knew existed. Oh, I, yeah, exactly. Like the community on YouTube is so strong and so um, rabid. I oh, think yeah. that's one thing that I, I did not know. And all the big YouTubers know each other, you know, everybody. And even now with this whole Logan Paul situation, everyone is, you know, if, if someone does something, everyone else comments on it now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right then. yeah. And, you know, and I think too, <clears throat> and maybe this is even more than, than YouTube, but I know we both know Roberto, Roberto Blake, phenomenal guy, and who actually used to live uh, in just outside of Raleigh. I think he's moved to Atlanta now. But, you know, you can interact with these guys. Yeah. I mean, they actually want to help you. And sometimes on it, outside of social, it's hard to do that. You know, you can shoot a note to somebody or a tweet. I mean, I, I've had conversations with Tim Schmoyer, you know, and Sean Cannell, and, and these guys that you know, they live to help other people succeed, which is kind of different than the television model. Yeah. And that's one thing I didn't realize <clears throat> about YouTube either was how big of a space, the training, the, how big the training oh, yeah. space is that now there are, and because so many people want to be YouTubers or they want to grow a channel yeah. Yeah. there, there, it's just really opened the gates for people to come in and help other people make videos. Yeah. And I think that's one area where people like us have a lot of opportunity. Would you say? Yeah, because yeah. We, we know how to make videos and, you know, like I know how to produce stories, you know, obviously how to promote content. You know, I think for the TV people that feel like, oh, I don't know what else I would do. I think there's a lot of room in this field for you. I do, too. And, and I think, you know, the one thing that I think when you start getting into YouTube and that type of social media is you really ought to be yourself. I mean, you've got to let your guard down. You've got to just kind of be you. I mean, I, I'm just kind of me. People meet me like me or not, probably more don't. This is just kind of the way I am. And, and I think that can be good for on-air folks. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't have to pretend to be, yes. you don't have to, and you can, and it, like, again, um, I think one, <clears throat> the, there, there's such a difference with the FCC regulations too. Yeah. It, it is still a little weird, isn't it, for you to watch all these YouTube videos and see so much cursing? Yeah. And it's like, and there's no, they don't have a, they don't have any of those barriers. Um, again, there's a certain amount of, there, there is that, there are definitely lines that can be crossed. And again, right. I mentioned this in another video, yeah. where what you do and what you say, you can certainly be held accountable from a right. legal standpoint if it's, if right. it's something that you, can be a liability, but it's a lot more freer of a platform overall. Well, it, it is in terms of even sponsorships. I mean, you're not beholden to, you know, a sales team going out and selling yeah. and you hope you have that commercial time sold. You can actually go out and create your own sponsorships or have sponsors come to you and say, Hey, we really like your stuff. Um, <clears throat> you know, another thing too, that I think adds to all the, the, the crazy coolness about YouTube is it's global like that. Yeah. And, and for any creators thinking about that or any news folks going, well, you know, maybe I don't want to dive into this. Well, you know, what if you could be talking to folks in Europe immediately? live. I mean, even adding the live component to Facebook and YouTube especially has completely changed the game. 
And that, you know, that's such a good point. That's such a good point is you're not limited to having people watch you in your yes. viewing area. Yeah. You are only limited by people who have the internet. Yeah. Evidently, I'm a hit in Great Britain, which is why I wore this. <laughs> All but. right. I like that. 007. Yeah. Okay. So I want to, I've run into this a little bit and we've talked a little bit offline about this. <clears throat> um, there are some people that are, you know, since I made the announcement, I recently went full time with YouTube because I, it's something I really believe in. And even if YouTube ceases to exist, there's going to be something else. Yes. Um, yes. So I really wanted to go all in on leveraging my background for new media. I'm, I'm very passionate about it. It's something that I, you know, the longer, the more I did it, the more I was like, this is the future. Um, but I've run into people who are very curious about it. They're like, how did you do that? You know, like they ask questions. And here I, I do plan on making videos, kind of sharing more about that process. But then I also get people, they're not haters, but they're definitely skeptics. And yeah. I think they probably think I'm nuts. <clears throat> and, and I run into a lot of those too. Um, what do you, have you kind of noticed that as well in the TV circles? Yeah, maybe a little. Um, I, you know, from, from my side of the fence, if you will, in, in the, the creative groups and stuff like that, I, I think we're like, oh, cool, man. You're on YouTube. Oh, sweet. You're doing that because it's kind of what we do and, and we get used to it. But I still think part of it is probably the fear of the unknown. Yeah. You know, like we talked about earlier that folks, you know, they don't really know YouTube because they're not on it. They just know what they hear about it. Or, you know, the, the controversy comes out and then all of a sudden that becomes the biz, big buzz thing about how bad YouTube is and things like that. But you know, to me, it's almost kind of like the overnight sensation. A lot of times, you know, we go back to Casey Neistat. It's, it's easy to look at him now and go, dang, that dude is like crazy popular and successful, but he didn't start there. You know, Gary no, Vaynerchuk. Not at all. Oh yeah. I started with like no followers. He yeah. did a wine show for a year with nobody watching, but we forget that. And yeah, I think that, I think sometimes there's still this bias about it because I think it's seen as still the, the crappy videos, you know, that were shot this way of the cat running across the street, you know, and that's all YouTube are. They're just squirrel videos and cat videos. And, and they're forgetting, I mean, even forget YouTube Red that has now programmed. Mm -hmm. They're, they're forgetting that, or they're not, they're not uh, remembering that it's, it's, it's evolved and it's far more than that. And it is a great way to get messages out, to be funny, to launch shows. Um, so I think there's, I, you know, I don't know if it's, a, if it's an arrogance, I don't know if it's, if it's just a, well, you know, that can't last or it's just, or the storytelling style is so different that they're not ready for it. I, I don't, I don't know, but yeah, I, I've seen that. And it's, it's like, dude, just try it. Yeah, try just it. get, you know, and they, no, that's the thing. Numbers do not lie. Look how many people are watching YouTube. Yeah. You can see numbers. You can see yeah. Philip DeFranco has a bigger audience than any of these networks yeah. do for their primetime shows. Yeah. I mean, people are watching YouTube more than anything. Yeah. And, I and think that's the beauty. The analytics don't lie. No. I mean, I guess they could, but they, but for the most part, you can see when they're watching, let's go to YouTube, you know, when they're dropping off of your video, where they're coming from, you know, the, it's, it, it is what it is. I mean, if it gets a view, it's going to show you. Definitely. Well, all right. From the promotion side, um, a lot of YouTubers, <laughs> You know, they want to get noticed. They want to have that viral video, or maybe they just want some attention from local TV right. stations or networks. Um, if you, if you were giving advice to YouTubers, um, how would you recommend they best promote themselves to media outlets? Okay. First of all, you can't, if, if you're trying to pro create a viral video, you can't, I, I don't, I don't subscribe to this, you know, well, you know, well, let's, let's do a viral video. Well, most viral videos don't become viral because they set out to be viral. I know there's some exceptions, but they're very, very few. And I would also say that, okay, so you do something viral. What's your next video? You know? Yeah. So, and a lot of them don't have a plan in place. Like no. they don't have the framework in place for right. what happens after they get the, right. get the video. One of the things I would, I would suggest is, and, and I try to do this with my team when, when I was at the Fox station is there's a ton of platforms out there you can be on. I felt like we should, you know, it, we could do a lot of platforms good, or we could do fewer platforms really good. And I think, you know, I, everybody feels like, well, I've got to be on Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest and this and this and this and this and this. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What really makes sense? 
What do you like? And where can you tell your story? You know, I, I, I taught, I had a chance to teach at a local college for six weeks. And what I told the students is, you've never been at a better time to be a content creator. You don't have to go to the three networks. And if they don't want your show, yeah. start a website. And it's, you don't even have to have a lot of expensive gear either. Bingo, bingo. I mean, I'm telling you, this, this right here, I don't even think this one shoots 4K, but it can, it can shoot. But, you know, start a website. You can do it for free. You know, if you can, and if you've got the money, buy your, your domain. You can do it for, what, 10 bucks, 12 bucks? Unless you're Kevin Colby and you, you have to haggle with the dude over the price. Yes, that, <laughs> you know, but I made him some money and, and supported his family. And that was the important thing. But I, I would just say the way to do it is keep grinding. And then one of the things that I think is huge is, is developing relationships and not just contacts. And so make sure that, you know, um, it's okay to promote yourself but try and be personable about it and try and offer value and try and just get to know people. I mean, they may never offer you any, a job, but maybe you can just help them. And, and, you know, I mean, I'm on a, I'm kind of a marketer, I guess, by nature and I love to help other people, but you know, part of it is just out there and sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing. And nobody's going to come to your door and say, hey, Jennifer, you know, I, I bet you've got a great idea. Why don't you do a video on it? Nobody's going to do that. No. You, know, you, need to, you need to make things happen for yourself. Yeah, yeah, and, and be okay with that. And, and if people see it as promoting, okay, that's fine. And, and I think just getting into it and taking chances and taking chances and taking chances. And one of the things I, I've, I've told people, you know, just because you fail doesn't mean that you're a failure. It just means that didn't work. Yeah. And one other thing I've noticed is sometimes like people feel so much pressure. They're like, oh, you have to do Instagram or you have to do WordPress. <clears throat> um, if it's not something like Gary Vaynerchuk says this, if it's not something you're good at, don't do it. <clears throat> like, yeah. like if it's something yeah. you're not comfortable with, if you're not a natural writer, you probably shouldn't write a yeah. book or at least not without yeah. a ghost writer. Yeah. If you, if you don't like doing videos, if you don't want to do videos, don't jump on YouTube just because everybody else is. Exactly, uh, exactly. You, you and you need to do the things that you have a talent for, a gift for, and have yeah. an interest in. Um, so I don't tell everyone you need to start a YouTube channel, but if if you love creating videos, yeah. this is a great platform for yeah. you. I, and you know what? I think that I think that is, is a brilliant point too because it's it's trying to kind of like let's go back. I I don't know how to fix my truck. I could probably figure out some things or I could just go to a guy and a mechanic and probably pay more than I should and say, Hey, I, can you fix it? But there's other things I can do that I enjoy doing with it. And part of it is just plain. So, you know, start a blog and shoot some videos and record your voice and go, yeah. oh, man, you know, I, I really like the writing part. Then that's okay. And what you don't know or what you don't, you're good at or enjoy then don't focus on that. Cause I, I think, I think people are trying to do it all and they're just doing okay at it. And they and it, they feel like it's a grind and it's not fun and you know, and then they just give up on everything. And it's like, no, no. I mean, I, there's a, there's a guy that I follow named Daniel J Lewis who does the audacity of the podcast and he's a podcaster and that's his niche. And he's really, really good at it. He doesn't try to be a blogger. He doesn't even try to be a vlogger. He's a podcaster. And that's what he's good at. Well, I want to ask, what is your YouTube channel about? Well, you know, that's when, the, the, so here's the irony, <clears throat> is trying to find that voice over time. I mean, I've, I've kind of shifted here and there. Since starting my own company, what I'm trying to get it more to is being about what I'm calling just creative media, is offering advice and encouragement on how to be creative in media, um, just things you can do, things you ought to know about, advice, what I've learned. And, and I think part of what I need to do this year too is really dig down and say, okay, here are things I've learned. Let me pass that on to you, that legacy type thing. So, you know, I guess if you could say it's more educational, I love vlogging. You know, I, so if you, if you go there now, there's probably a little bit more of a hodgepodge than it should, but I'm trying to get that directed more to be more about just creative media. And folks, I will link Kevin's channel below and also all of his social media handles. So you can find Kevin Colby and uh, 
Now, Kevin, you've worked in radio, you've worked in yes. TV, and you've worked, you now do YouTube. Yes. What are some of the big differences between those platforms have you found? You know, I'll tell you one of the similarities is that you're, you've got to connect with people. Uh, because like I'm back on radio now, part-time on, on uh, 94.7 QDR in Raleigh. And uh, I was just on last night. And the coolest thing, my wife can tell you, what drives me nuts is when I don't get calls. And it's not about an ego thing. I just like talking to folks. Yeah. And so I asked some question last night. What's your favorite concert you've ever gone to? Just lit up. One guy said, don't win anything. And I said, just my love. Just all oh, you just you just want to have a conversation. And I just I want to have a conversation. Yeah, so just, so that is the similarity in that with television though, with social media, is just being able to connect with folks. I mean, <clears throat> I guess it kind of strokes the ego. I'd like to think my ego died a long time ago, but when somebody gives you a thumbs up or comments or asks a question, yeah. then you know you've reached someone, even if they want to debate you a little. Um, but the, you know the differences. I, it goes back to trying not to master everything. It's understanding the difference. You know, all, radio is really, it's, it's kind of the theater of the mind that used to be called. But, you know, you have to close your eyes, whether you're listening to the song or whether you're listening to the commercial and be taken somewhere. The announcer's got to be talking to you. It's not television. If you just strip away the pictures, it just doesn't become radio. You know, but then you get into television and television can transport us you know, and, and show us places, but then you get into more social and video and we can have this conversation. I mean, like what we're doing right now, people will see this later via tape, not via tape, via, via non, non live, right? You and I are live right now, but, but look at how we're talking over our webcams and cool mics and stuff like that. So the differences though, I think are sometimes not that different as the similarities of just being able to connect us with folks tell stories, capture moments. Again, I go back to the phone, I'm not getting paid anything by, by Apple, but we're not sponsored by, we're not big enough to be sponsored by I'm Apple. Not, at this I'm not sponsored by anything, <laughs> but you know, I mean, you know, what was it a year or two ago that Apple started promoting this as a camera, not a phone anymore. And you know, if people go, go I don't know how to start. Do you have one of these? Yeah, just you know? use your phone, um, you know, and I would say if you want to improve the audio, maybe get like a mic, like a lavalier microphone that yeah. attaches and you'll be, yeah. you'll be good to go. The microphones are like 20, 30 bucks. Yeah. I will say the one thing though, I think social media has that is maybe different, but is a huge advantage is the immediacy. Yeah. You know, if I go into a television station and say, Hey, I want to do a program. They're like, they're going to be like, yeah, no, right here. Yeah. We're going to get security. You know, and uh, granted, I mean, I've got the background, but for the most part, you know, um, if I can't just walk in any other radio station and say, I want to do a show, but you know what? You can start a YouTube channel. You can start a blog. You can do a Twitter account and go live. You can create yeah. graphics and the tools are free. It's amazing how many tools out there are free or cost very, very yeah. little. Exactly. It's funny how people can find excuses for not doing stuff when there's so many, there's so many resources, you don't have any excuses. Yeah. Well, and, and don't you think sometimes though we, it, it's easy to compare, you know, we look and go, well, I can't do that. I can't yeah. do that. Well, yeah. I mean, I can't be Peter McKinnon. I mean, the dude is crazy cool and talented, but you know what? He's Peter McKinnon and I'm Kevin Colby. So I've got gifts and, and I've had opportunities. So let me fall in that niche. And, and the same thing where you, you've got an amazing story that you're already turning around into amazing stories. And that's why I wanted to do this because I noticed there was a real lack of, of spaces and places where people who used to work in TV could talk or share information. Like we've got you, we've got a uh, Brendan, Mike Deason. Uh, I'm going to have somebody named uh, Don Ennis on. And, you know, yeah. these people all have incredible experience and it's, it's, it's a shame for it to go to waste or yeah. for, for it not to be shared because yeah. you guys have so much valuable information that can be used on YouTube, that can be used for people who want to get into journalism or right. get into creative media. And um, I think that that information doesn't really exist on YouTube yet. So I thought, right. you know what? Hey, why not? I can, you know, I've got a I'm using some free software and I've got a microphone and that's all you need. You don't need, you know, nobody, you know, I didn't have to go. And that's the cool thing is that I was so, I, I used to produce a lot of special project stuff and it was such a pain in the butt to try to get anything approved by your boss. Like <laughs> yeah. you'd have an idea and they'd be like, because it wasn't their idea, they'd be like, eh, 
Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. But now if I want to do a show or if I want to do anything, I can just like, I don't need permission from anybody. I yeah. can just start doing it. Yeah. And I think that's something that is really amazing about social media. And I do, so I have another question for you. What are some things you love and then on the flip side hate about social media? What I love is one of the things we talked about is, is how you, and okay, so I love Twitter because I don't know how many conversations I've just had with folks who don't know me. I don't really know them. I've got a quick question. I, I, you get I access to people you normally wouldn't. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, Roberto and I follow each other. Roberto doesn't know me. I'd like to think he does, but he doesn't. But I love, I love the interaction part. I love the, the fact that it's easier, I think, to express creativity. You know, how, how I post maybe on my, my YouTube profile is different than maybe Instagram. And, and so I, that's what I just love about social media is that it is so accessible. Now, the flip side to it, though, is I do think it's hurt communication some. Because one, I think you have folks that can hide behind it to attack others, and it's too easy to. Um, I feel like there's some broken systems there. I mean, I, right now there's a lot of inconsistencies going on in YouTube where they'll flag some channels and not the other. Is that part of growth? Is that part of society? I, I don't know. Um, the other thing too, but this is more on me, not, not social media, is it can become consuming. You know, I feel like, ooh, well, I, you know, it's a commercial break. I need to go check something. Oh, look at this. Oh, I've got to do that. And, but I don't think that's social media's fault. I think that's me not being able to disconnect from that because it is just so accessible. Yeah. Well, I was, uh, right before we got on, I was listening to the Jenna Julian podcast. I know it's a, it's a bit of a guilty pleasure. <clears throat> Jenna Marbles is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> and um, she had, so they did a whole episode on Logan Paul and his whole controversy over the Japan suicide forest. And it was really interesting to hear from her because she is a more mature YouTuber. You know, she's been on the platform for a long time. She's seen some stuff and she's lived through some of the things that Logan has experienced. So wow. having it come from her, who's, who, who really does know about that sort of thing, it was interesting. And she was, she had some good points. You know, again, YouTube, a lot of people think YouTube is a free for all. You can do whatever you want. But at the same time, a lot of these YouTubers are starting to police each other, which I think is sort of a good thing. Right. Um, because again, it is much different than broadcast. There's so many rules of things you can't do. In fact, I just did a video on things you can't do on yeah. television. Yeah. And, you know, YouTube, it, you know, again, they do have their terms of service, but YouTube doesn't really apply that consistently sometimes. Yeah. But Jenna had some real, and I'll link it below too. They had some really good thoughts on the state of YouTube and people like Jake and Logan Paul. And she was saying, you know what? It's so difficult as a vlogger because you you have to come up with all this content constantly and it's really easy to become disconnected and also mm -hmm. to be at a point where you you just want to like they're trying to one-up each other and do shocking things for views now right and you're right. seeing that with a lot of bigger vloggers is that like what crazy thing can we do today that we didn't do yesterday right. uh, but she also said she's like you know what you you can't burn people because whether the Pauls think they're invincible or not, you can't survive on a platform if, if nobody has your back. If, if people yeah. don't respect you, they don't want to work with you, yeah. you're not, you are not going to make it. Yeah. So I thought that was really, and, and you should go back to listen to it. She doesn't have a lot of cursing in it. I noticed she's kind of, and that's the thing, over time, again, he's like, Logan Paul's like, what, 22? Yeah, something Jenna like Marbles that. used to do more like shocking videos, and now right. she's really like toned down her channels. Philip DeFranco, same thing. He used to do a lot more cringy stuff. He's yeah. matured, he's gotten older, and now he has like a news channel. So yeah. there's no saying that Logan Paul might in the future transition into more of a mature person. Right, right. Well, and, and you know, that's the thing too. I, I think, you know, the one thing, if somebody hasn't started the cha their channel or whatever, I mean, you, you again, you're going to be in the public eye. Once you, you change your account from private to public, so you've got to think about that. You've got to think about if you've got a family. You've got to think about if family's leaving. You've got to think about that too. But so what happens then in, in the situation with, with Logan Paul, you know, 
do we allow him any grace if he apologizes? Do we allow him to change? Do we allow him to grow? Because I'd like to think we all learn over time. Now, some of us take longer to learn and things like that. So, but, you know, it is immediately thrust out there, you know, and then, but, and then the irony is the traditional media will pick up on that story. Yeah. Exactly. And then that becomes, that becomes the narrative. And it's like, no, 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 that's, he's a, he's a guy that made a really, really bad mistake. Whether it was planned or not, it was a mistake. And if he says, Hey, look, I'm sorry. A couple of times, then, then what happens next? Yeah. And if he starts showing that and growing, yeah. I mean, who knows 10 years from now, he may be doing the Phil DeFranco show. Yeah. We, cause Philip DeFranco used to, I think one of his for one of the videos that he first, uh, got known for it. he had like a title like boobs and you or something and it had like a split shot of because he knew that would get yeah absolutely clicks. so a lot of youtubers in their earlier careers do things that later on yeah they might like be like oh i can't believe i i can't believe i did that yeah. and and that's the thing these kids are growing up on the internet and you and i didn't have to deal with that mm -mm. no no and you know it something too for folks that maybe are just starting or thinking about starting is, and, and again, I'm speaking from experience because I've kind of been all over the place, but really think about why you're doing it. Because, you know, you and I are on some of the same um, groups and these folks will start and they're like, man, just nobody's watching. I'm not getting subscribers. And it's like, but why are you doing it? Are you doing it because you enjoy it? I mean, if you want to do a vlogging channel because you want to talk about blank, and you want to have fun with it and play, then do it, yeah. do it and see what, because something else totally may come from that. You know, I mean, I, I've, I've shifted my thinking of trying to go after subscribers to trying to do things that have impact and help others, you know, so I may be slower on the pace now of getting things out there, but to me, just, there's a different motive for doing it rather than just, you know, I, I'm just going to do, just for the analytics, just for the subscriber base. And I don't care about anything else. And then you get frustrated because I, one of my stats is I think 95% of my views come from non-subscribers. Hey, I'm glad that I've got views, you know, but does it do anything for them? Are they having fun with it? Does it open some doors for meetings? You know, and, and I think people really need to think through that because I think there's too many people just, I want to do this because it's going to make me famous. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe for the wrong reasons. <laughs> and, and people have to think, what value does this have for the viewer? Yes. If it has zero value, if it's super entertaining, that's one thing. But yeah. if, if it's not really entertaining and doesn't have any like intrinsic value for anyone, you're, not, you're probably not going to get very many views. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a photographer I stumbled upon a few years ago, or a few, a few months ago, named Scott McKenna. Super nice guy. And about a year ago, he said he wanted to, to blog every day, uh, vlog every day. And just recently he said, I'm going to stop it because I'm going to transition. He said, you know, the reason I did it is because I just wanted to, to do it. And he said the part, the hard part was trying to come up with something every day. He said, but I was never doing it for the subscriber. I think he has 5,000 subscribers. He said, I just did it because I just wanted to share my journey every day. And I thought, wow, that is such a noble reason. That's all he did it for. It, he actually grew, but he was just having fun doing it. And some things were like, you know, Oh man, I really messed up on that, you know, and he'd just be talking about it. And, and he did, he did everything you weren't supposed to. His thumbnails aren't that great. The titles, you know, like, Oh, what I learned today. And They're not like very searchable or topical. Right. Right. But his goal was, I just want to vlog every day because I just want to show people my journey. And if they find it, that's great. And I thought, you know what? Good for you. Well, so if someone's just getting started with YouTube, like maybe they don't know much about it or they're, you know, they're just trying to start a channel. What kind of, uh, what kind of things would you recommend they do off the bat? Like just if they're starting from scratch. So there's, <clears throat> there's a couple of videos I would search out and watch. There's three videos actually. There's, there's Casey Neistat's do what you can't. Oh, yeah. oh my God. That was such a great video. And you know what? I will link all of those. All right. So I'll find them and link them to make it easier for everybody. Yeah. If you don't watch that and you don't feel motivated, yeah. then I wouldn't do anything else. Yeah. If you go, well, yeah, but you know, no, 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 no. If you, if you, that doesn't get you, like, I've got you, can't, you can't watch that video and not be affected. Right, right. That's one. There's another one by uh, Simon. Ugh, Is it know. Simon Sinek or? Yes, yes. What? Start with okay. why. Okay. 
and it was it was a talk it was a TED talk I think he gave years ago but it's about how companies like Apple and other ones when they start with the why it makes more sense and they connect more phenomenal one and actually one is by Gary Vaynerchuk which is one document our favorite, don't one of our, our favorite off color commentators yes yeah don't watch it with the family yeah no <laughs> no kid no kids be on the mute button but uh, it's called document don't create and his whole point is now you know the one thing that gary doesn't point out that everybody needs to remember he has from what i understand a staff of 15 mm -hmm. that just follows him around to to document for his personal branding but you know what he has an empire he can do that but if you watch this it's really good about getting hung up on creating and not just documenting yeah. because that can be a stopper those are those are three that I would highly recommend. But then I would seek out some folks like Shaw Cannell, and I, I probably butcher his name every every time. Uh, Roberto Blake. Um, oh, Daryl Eves for the YouTube algorithm for Darryl sure. Daryl Eves, yeah, yeah. Now I will say this about Daryl though, and this is just my take: is that I love Daryl, but I think it can be deeper. So for people just starting out. I would look at somebody like Roberto and look at some of his create awesome, uh, not even not well, some of the rants too, but just him talking and, and then Sean for more of the practical, especially think media when he's getting yeah. into just like, Hey, you know, you got 50 bucks here or something. Uh, Tim Schmoyer is very good. Um, there's some folks like that, that I would seek out and just watch what I wouldn't do. You didn't ask me this, but I'll do this. I wouldn't, I would not try and copy anyone. What That's good advice. The, my wife's clock's going off. All right. What? Um, All right. We're going to have a dance break here. One more. So <laughs> I, have no, I have no rhythm. Um, one of the things that I hate video wise is how to edit like blank. And they're all over. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Because I don't want to edit like maybe I should want to edit like Casey, but Casey's such a cool style. Now I think it's cool to see how he does his things, but to me, I think there's too much people trying to imitate other people. Yeah, no, I, I would, I would that. agree too many copycats and not enough originators. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, watch him, you know, find out. Um, and there's a lot of other guys too. I, I find, but those were the three videos that I would always recommend. Um, you know, and then there's a couple of, there's a couple of books, like I've really gotten into to audio books recently, Gary Vaynerchuk again, crush it. Phenomenal. Uh, Amy Schmidt hours, sexy, savvy show, uh, actually a vlog like a boss is really good. Even if you don't get into video it or want to vlog, it is really good. Um, and there's some other books like <clears throat> there's a book called selling the invisible, which is really about how we how we can communicate with folks in ways we don't even realize um that is is phenomenal i think harry beckwith is it but you know if you get i, I don't know if i'm answering the question but i would definitely start with those three videos <clears throat> because i think those are at the core of what you need to 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 think and if you if you only picked one i would do do what you can't okay yes yeah i would i'm with you on that one i am with you and and here's another thing too um like you were like, have you seen the Jake Paul influence commercial? Yeah. Of course. What did you think? <clears throat> so I actually saw it because of you. That you commercial, know. like I like, I think it's dying for some sort of spoof. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. I was talking to my husband about. He would be Jake Paul. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah I actually uh, I checked it out and I joined. You joined? What do you? All right. What I did you think of it? I didn't pay the money, so like, I went through the steps to see what it ranked me as. And evidently, okay. I'm a shaker and a mover. Oh. And then I got the email telling me how much it's I owe. Like it's like yeah. fifty seven dollars. Like from what I understand, you pay the seven dollars, and then it immediately just uh, just asks you to pay another fifty seven dollars. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I was talking to my husband about this, and so I'm not. A lot of people I know have bought the class, and they liked it, and they got value out of it. I've chosen not to. Yeah, I. Um, I, I and here's my thought <clears throat> behind it: is that. Like, how many people who take the Jake Paul class are going to be social media rock stars on his level? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and you know, I, maybe, and, and again, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know the dude, but 
I think the whole premise bothers me. Now, again, I, you know, you mentioned it. I checked it out. I thought I'm just I was gonna- like, I was like, I cannot believe. And why do they call it Edfluence? Like what? I'm not really sure why. Unless it's an education. Yeah, Ed Flu- Yeah, like edu- Yeah, I was like, what, yeah. like, what does that even mean? But him getting out of like the, what was it? And I, uh, and my husband corrected me. I thought it was like a DeLorean, but it was like a Lambert. Like I got the yeah. car totally wrong. Um, yeah, I, the, the problem with that though is I think people will sign up for that like guaranteed they're going to do X, Y, and Z, and then they're going to be this social media icon or something like that. And I think it's a false yeah. premise going in. I mean, it just, it, it is. I mean, if, if I consult with a business, I can't, we would have, we would have sometimes folks say, can you guarantee my client this? And I would say, no, no, no. I can't. What I can guarantee is that we'll work with them, we'll help them, but I can't tell them that if we do this promotion, a thousand people are going to come to their store because I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 something that again you can't predict that. And my other thinking behind this whole Edfluence class was that is the mindset of people like really successful people. Yeah. They don't like I don't know of anyone that got to where they are like a superstar yeah. by like take signing up for all these yeah. cl- like it's a mind it's more of a mindset like yeah. I think you either have it or you don't. Um, you have that entrepreneurial spirit. And like, again, Jake Paul, I think in some regards is a very smart businessman. He's done some things oh, yeah, that yeah. I think are tre- are tremendously, yeah. uh, again, do I like the guy? Would I hang out with him? He's probably not up my alley. And I don't, I don't think I would qualify for team 10. I'm probably way too old. And, um, but as a businessman, I was li- watching it. I watched that Lewis Howe school of greatness interview with him and the decisions he's made and the way he's leveraged oh, yeah. his his fame is pretty genius. So yeah. I, I got to give him that. The, creating the, the label for so, the social media label is really, really yeah. smart. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I think he came up through Disney too, right? So he, he well, in the interview, he talks about how he got the Disney job only after he became the Vine star. So oh, okay. Was, so he was already, that's the interesting thing. He was already famous. And he said during the interview, he was, again, I don't know the validity of this fact, but he said he was the first social media influencer to get a regular TV like acting job. Right. He said he was a, you know, he and his brother moved to LA and they were, you know, auditioning for things, but they're like, why wait for someone to give us acting jobs? We can create right. our own stuff, which I think is a really smart, a very good mindset to have. And again, that's why, you know, I decided to branch out on my own. I was like, you know, I, you know, if I waited, like I worked at CNN, if I waited for CNN to give me, you know, my own segment, like this show or something, you know, it probably wouldn't happen. And you can't wait for someone to act for you. Yeah. You have to make, you really have to take the steps in your own life. Absolutely. To make, to, to, to take action. And yeah. if you don't do, you know, if you're all like, well, I can't get a job because no one will hire me, create your own job, do something on the side. Absolutely. Help find a way. Absolutely. And, and, you know, there's, there's, there's easier ways of doing it now too. I think just because the tools are more accessible, you know, it used to be that, uh, yeah. you know, if, if consumers wanted to buy a camera, I mean, you'd have to mortgage your house, you know? And I mean, this is, this is my, this is my baby. Yeah. Hello. And you know, I, I got a deal, I think through Amazon on that and it, and it didn't cost a lot, you know? Um, but again, this is a camera. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, and this is, this is a success. So, so I'm, I'm even behind. Right. But I can do some pretty cool things. Kevin, I've never, ever bought an iPhone. Are you serious? I, I've never, ever bought. I have an iPod six. I'm too cheap for the monthly data plan. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I had, I had like an iPhone five for work, but it was only like for email and I didn't pay yeah. for it. Yeah. But I, to this day, um, I have never, bought and my husband he he's not really on the apple train like but he doesn't like android because they sell all your personal information oh yeah so he doesn't like he doesn't like either like he's very yeah. he wants to get one of those flip phones that like doesn't really do much oh yeah he said yeah. he wants it to only text that's it but he doesn't want to and yeah. my husband is very much opposite to me he has made youtube videos and i've helped him but he's not on social media he doesn't go on facebook he doesn't use snapchat instagram um, so he's really, he doesn't really have much of a, uh, besides the YouTube videos, he doesn't have much of a social media presence. Right. It's interesting to live with somebody that like doesn't do any of that. Yeah. It, it is, it is odd. So but why does he choose not to? He just, I don't know. He just doesn't, he, he, just doesn't. 
he like his fam like his family will post on Facebook of like why don't they just call me like I don't know he I don't know. He's more old. It's his mentality is more like an eighty-year-old man. So I don't know. How funny! Well, but you know, it's, it's interesting. But you know, the, the two things though come to mind. Is one is is I think people need to think about what do they what do they gauge success by? Because I think we do live in a society. Go back to Jake Paul. You know, like or or his, his brother. You know, you can be a social media rock star. We're going to sell you success. Mm -hmm. And my daughter used to ask me a lot growing up. You know, was well, so and so famous? Is so and so and it's successful? I'm like, well, you know, to who? What yeah, does it mean? Define success. Success means so much to different people. Absolutely. And, and again, that Jenna and Ju, you, you really need to listen to that Jenna and Ju. It was very yeah, interesting. Yeah. And she was like, she and Julian were like, like how much more successful does Logan Paul need to be? Yeah. Like, you know, he's already, you know, like he, why does he need to keep upping the Andy? Like there's really, you know, like what, what are they hoping to gain? Like from like, yeah. he already has like what, like 12 or 15 million subscribers. Like, yeah. You know, he's already done what a lot of people are already watching his videos. Like, the the other thing too is I wouldn't give into the demo stuff. You know, I mean, I I I've thrown around the word millennials and stuff mm -hmm. and whatever the other ones are, but you know, I think I think it's easy for people to go, I'm either too old, or and I do think you can be too young. You know, but I mean, too young as in you know you're you're underage, you don't need to be on social, just wait. Yeah. But you know, my mother-in-law, when she was sixty something, she was a gamer. And so I've heard of, my, my husband plays with some older women who are there gay, you go yeah and he yeah. like he enjoys playing with them and it totally defies all the stereotypes we think of when you think of gamer so that would be that would be my other advice is just don't don't yeah. you know don't worry about these boxes out there you worry know what, about you you know what kind of channel I would like to see and I think would blow up a senior citizen daily vlogging you're probably like, right. Like yeah. someone who was in, like, so, you know, like an, like an older retired person. I yeah. think that would do really well. It would be yeah. like, you know, not exactly the Jake Paul, Casey Neistat style, but just someone who was Feels not so. like 20 years old, like, yeah. you know, again, but I think that, I think that type of channel. So if you're out there and you want a channel idea, That's a great I idea. think something like that could really blow up. And here's the other part of it is that that person has so much life experience to share. Oh. So like Gary Vaynerchuk always says, go to the nursing home and ask these people what they regret. Yeah. Like, and, and even Philip DeFranco was saying, I guess there used to be someone that was very popular on YouTube that was an, like an older man and he would just tell stories. You know, again, I wouldn't downplay the value of that because there's right. a lot of value in, some, in, a, in somebody's life experience. I saw, there was, oh man, I wish, I, if I find it, I will send it to you. There was a video shared several months ago in one of the groups this lady, I want to say, is like 90-something, and she just, like, makes bread, and she lives in some village somewhere, and it was, and, and she's certainly not a star by any, any means, but it's, a, her following is insane, and she's just like, she's a happy little old lady making bread, you know, but it's the cutest little thing, and it's like, okay there you go. And she's just doing it because she yeah. thinks it's a hoot. Exactly. So don't think that what you're doing is, it would not would right. not have an audience because right. as we've seen from vra there are people with channels that i would never even think oh, like yeah. there's a guy who's a mushroom farmer there is um a uh what was it oh there's that lady she has the potato diet yes and i was like i didn't even know like didn't you know existed. Come, you you realize there's so many niches that you had no idea are out there um so i i i know i've probably told you i have a so my other channel is a sewing channel yeah. which is not something that's usually associated with, with the millennial crowd. Um, and the other thing I've been really getting into, and I, and I was just doing some research, the miniatures community for like dollhouses. Oh, yeah. I've been kind of doing some research and it's sort of fascinating. But again, it's, it's something where typically it's not something in my age group, but I think it's pretty cool. So like, yeah. I think anything you're into that you, you want to just learn about or you want to just share, I think, I, I, you know, I wouldn't downplay that as a channel idea or as a video idea. Well, and you know, something I did not too long after the, the position went away, just because it's, it's funny because I've always told my kids, you know, I don't, I don't want a, a job to define me, but yet all of a sudden when I didn't go in the office and people would say, what do you do? I'd go like, uh, you're like, I, I don't know. No, no, I've got good hair. I'm not sure. You know? And so I literally did a Facebook live to just the, the folks I'm connected with. And I said, I need your help. 
You know, if, if you know me and I'm not asking for people just to, to be nice and stuff, but just what do you think of me? What do you think I'm an expert at? And that's and, a good way of putting it, of getting and, like asking for feedback. And the feedback was actually really good. You know, and I did, you know, a couple of guys that are friends of mine, you know, it's like, oh, what a great way to get compliments. I said, I swear I'm not doing it for that. But, but it was really, it reinforced some things I was thinking yeah. and made me think about, hmm, well, okay, let me, and, and you start seeing threads. So that, I think if people don't know, just ask, you know, don't ask your mom because you're good at everything, but ask somebody else, say, what, you know, what do you think I'm an expert in? What do you hear me talk about? You know, and then, you know, I, I guarantee there's not, as you know, as the scriptures say, there's nothing new under the sun, right? That there are passions out there. It may be super niche, which sometimes is good. And it may be other things that just, you know, you, you just want to talk about. So I do, I do want to um, address another thing that I've seen pop up and that is, um, you know, I'll talk to people with children and the kids are interested in doing YouTube or, you know, creating videos and the parents are really worried about safety concerns about yeah. YouTube, which yeah. I totally get. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I, I think it's a very short sighted mindset too, because there's so much opportunity with YouTube. And I think done in the right way, like we were chat, you know, we were in that group with a gentleman who started a channel for his yeah. children. Yeah. Um, I think there's so much you can learn from doing YouTube yeah. and, and then you get the parents are like, well, my kid's just going to college. They're not doing YouTube. Right. But what do you think about that type of, uh, type of aspect? Yeah. You know, it's funny because I've got three kids, um, and our oldest is about to be 20 and he has never, ever had a desire to be in, in front of the camera at all. In fact, all of all still to this day, the pictures are sitting when he was little, but you know, now they're all like, you know, I'm like, dude, really smile, you know, and my daughter enjoys some of that. And my youngest one, he just, he doesn't yeah. care. He has special needs. He just doesn't care. So, you know, I, I think there's val. Okay. So I think if you have kids that are interested in that, I mean, I think there's that young, young age where they're going to be interested in a, in a box just as much as anything else. But if they start seeing that, I think help them cultivate it you know, and just see where it goes. I mean, you do it all legally because there's a certain age that, you know, you, you're supposed to be before you can mm -hmm. give your information, things like that. But I still think as they're young, as parents, we have to be very careful about the information and what we're showing and things like that. Because I know there's been some channels recently, and I think rightfully so, that were shut down because they were, they were not as family friendly no, as they portrayed no. themselves to be. No. And, and, you know, it, 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 from me on the outside looking in, it seemed like they were very done from an exploitive way, not necessarily that the kids were being harmed. I don't know that, but exploitive way for just getting yeah. attention. And I think that's, that's wrong. But I mean, I, you know, I think if your kids are interested in it, help them, you know, and monitor it and then guide them in it and, and, but don't force them in it. But then watch, be very careful about where you are and the information you give away and how, you know, how, how private. I know when, when my oldest son and my daughter now, when they got to the age they wanted a Facebook page, my deal with them was I would set it up. You never change your password. Yeah, I, you've got the passwords. So you can see what they're, yeah, what they're yeah. doing on it. And then I'm going gonna, gonna to lock it down for you where there's certain things in there. Yeah. You know, and then after a while, it's, you know, it's, it's theirs, but, but at least I send them out, you know, and then I'm always like, and if you don't know the person, don't take the request. But I do think there, I, I don't know that I'm anti kids being part of the social if YouTube community or whatever, but I do think there has to be some parenting with it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's something that you need to be, you need to be an active, you need to have a lot of active involvement yeah. if they're yeah. going to, if they're going to do it. But at the same time, like Gary Vaynerchuk has said before, you know, your parents aren't going to know the future. Like they didn't know video game gaming was going to be a career. So something that seems silly now could be like a really lucrative career in the future. Oh yeah. And I yeah. Think I mean, I, you know, overlook. I, my, my daughter I think is, is, is very creative in terms of visual and, and, and I think you can train people how to take pictures and there's some people just kind of born with a creative eye. And I think she has that creative eye. I've seen her composition and stuff like that. So when she's doing those, I try to encourage her because it's like, you know, honey, that's really cool. That's really good, but it's still your path if you want to take that. 
Exactly. Well, Kevin, this has been a really great discussion. Thank you so much for being here. I have one more thing I want to do. Okay. I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask any question you want to this audience. Oh, wow. I would say. Anything. It doesn't have to be related to you. It can be, you know, what, what's your favorite flavor of, you know. Okay. So here's a question. Here's a question I'll go with. Who do you think was the best Batman ever? Ooh. By the way, I don't know if you can see my top shelf up there, but I'm a huge Batman fan. So. All right. Yeah, so I, there's my, my question. My personal vote is Adam West. <laughs> you know, it's not I bad. Like yeah, I, 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 I would probably go with Christian Bale. Okay, you, oh. you big Christian Bale fan? All right, he, I mean, the guy is pretty jacked, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. He, Christian Bale and the Christian Nolan, the whole trilogy, trilogy was great. The one that surprised me the most, though, was Michael Keaton. I yes. thought, really? Mr. Mom? Mr. Mom. <laughs> that. And then all of a sudden it was like, yeah. Okay. But a Adam was, I mean, I grew up on Batman. Yeah, and that's, that's, I think, why, like, my favorite James Bond is Roger Moore, because that's, like, the first yeah, yeah. one I but thought. You, yeah, it wasn't yeah. shot. It was just the first one you see is the one that you feel is, like, the real, yeah. you know, sort of like how you think Christopher Reeve is the real Superman, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, uh, well, Kevin, do you have anything else you'd like to say? No, I just, I really appreciate this, this uh, opportunity. I mean, one of the things I missed going into the office every day was that constant being around creative. So one of the things that I've enjoyed about getting more involved in YouTube and social media, another plus, is getting to meet folks like you, being part of this community. We were on the call the other day with Heather, part of, of Sean's team, and it was just getting, being able to meet other folks that you're not in competition with, you're more in community with, yeah. and, and I've just enjoyed that. So thanks for having me on. Right back at you. And, and Kevin, again, thank you for being here. And you watching, if you are a, also a fellow XTV newser and you'd like to be featured here, hit me up. You can leave me a comment. You can find me on Twitter at XTV Producer. I will see you guys next time. And I'm Jennifer Moore. And feel free to subscribe if you'd like me to be your guide inside the media industry.